considered Meng to be uh, one of the strongest, if not the strongest player mechanically in the league. And while he's certainly still uh, very, very dangerous for opponents to face, I think I tend to agree with you in saying that, you know, he hasn't been as flashy. He hasn't been as uh, inspiring as yeah. he had been last season, for example. Well then, we are heading in and it is going to be, I believe that was Volskaya. 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 the corner of my eye. Wonderful. And we're starting off with the Diablo ban for the one. Once again, this is their most common ban by a mile with 13 bans so far mm -hmm. by the one. And Genji, likewise for the A team, 12 bans so far by them and the Halorak ban. They are, they've <laughs> They're been doing not... some Sorry, go ahead. They've, do they've been doing some target banning. They've been doing their research. Oh, absolutely. Bruiser is not being let on his Alarak, but they do not show enough fear of that Zujin just yet. Yeah. Looks like they do indeed have um, enough confidence to say, you know what? If, if that shenanigan troll gets through again, we're just going to counter him super hard. Garrosh White main coming in for the A team. Very solid opening. The one with the Decad already on the board. They're almost certain to lean back onto mm -hmm. their Phoenix or maybe even sneak in the Hanzo very uh, early. They definitely prefer this Phoenix over the Rainer, but they still do pick up the Rainer this time. A little bit of single target damage to try and burn through that Garrosh or burn through that white main. Makes sense here. And the Thrall coming in to combo with it and start to dominate that solo lane. Good stuff. Now, I really like the way the one has, you know, tackled that draft up to this point, right? Stealing uh, Alric away from Bruiser because he looked so dominant on that hero yesterday. And then also first picking the Decker King because the only time a team has run the Zul'jin, I believe, or at least the most successful time they've run Zul'jin, I think it's safe to say that the Decker Kane was deployed next to him as well. Decker Kane is just so good, as we said before, with those low mobile, you know, very yeah. sustainy uh, ranged assassins like Sergeant Hammer and Rainer. Well, today they ran it with, uh, wasn't with Decker, right? Was it? It was with uh, Malfurion. Uh, are you sure? I think so. Would be nice uh, checking out there. I think it was Decker Kane, though. It was. You're right. My bad. Okay, so yes, it definitely wouldn't be the same strategy if they were to try bringing it yeah. out here. It might even be a little bit risky. For if they're not going for that, then solo laner wise, we could be looking at a mouth ale, seeing as the thrall has already been taken away from them. We're going to see a zero tool. Bruce right. zero tool coming in. And Sergeant Hammer sneaks her way into the draft. The one, though. Have we seen a Nazebo from them so far this season? Ooh. We have not. Huh, this is an interesting call there. I mean, the previous... T I think Nazebo has yet to win a single game in HCC China. Um, hasn't really been doing well, not even into the Sergeant Hammer, which other regions uh, really preferred picking Nazebo into. I'm not hating it, though. This time, I think it is... Uh, the time is ripe, yes? Is. And the reason why I don't hate it is because... You normally can keep your distance from Garage. Zero Tool is dangerous, but especially in the late game, Nazebo is going to be tanky enough to actually withstand all that pressure from Zero Tool. You can even pick Superstition. And these feisty Zero Tool maneuvers, you know, where he blinks in, um, cleaves, and then goes out, it won't affect Nazebo because it's still ability damage. As long as Zero Tool doesn't attack you, you can mitigate so much of that damage. So now what are we looking at here? Hero Pool has been severely limited they jump back to that phoenix one mm -hmm. of their more common picks but picking it very late in the draft so another hero who is kind of affected by the blinds of Hulha there true but a hero who's gonna maybe do a little bit better against the spiders as his shield does come back far quicker yeah than the health of obviously anyone else except maybe muradin a hero that i really like into the Nazebo or against Nazebo would be asmodan i think asmodan uh, adds a lot of pushing power adds a lot of pressure you can really speed up your pushing process after, you know, getting a protector, which against Nazebo is usually acceptable uh, or easily done because of his lack of early game power. And then all of a sudden you just pressure the side lanes with your demon generals, right? You reinforce after level 10 the pushes even more with your uh, hell army. So as when it can be tricky to face sometimes as a Nazebo. This is true. So now then. How are we going to see this play out? The Nazebo coming in. Can it get it its first victory? Mm -hmm. Or will the A-Team bring it home with the first Zeratul we have seen in a very long time in HTC China? as something of a setup for this uh, Sergeant Hammer and uh, Burst. On to the Nazebo in general. 
I am curious if we'll actually start seeing more Zeratul once uh, Mephisto starts making his way Ooh. into the game. Mm -hmm. Because we, if you didn't see the clip, VP is a pretty good way to get out of the consumed souls. That is correct. You drop it on allies and uh, you basically dodge the damage. Also, Zeratul is a pretty uh, sweet hero to actually keep up with the mobility and the escaping tools of a Mephisto. So, really cool to see the Lord of Hatred enter professional play later on this year. Most likely, super stoked to see that. Yeah, it'll be available for playoffs, I believe, unless they decide to play on the same patch. Definitely we'll for find out shortly. As for now, we are loaded in. And on the left-hand side, it is going to be the one with Hugo, Keshi, Meng, ZJZ, and Huhu. Facing them is none other than the A-team with LK, Olele, Bruiser, Stugos, and last but not least, Garage being played by Yitzkuk. And uh, this is a team with a lot of momentum right now. We hyped them before and for good reason because they showed, they've showed they shown us some really great series previously. And they do have outstanding individual player material. Bruiser, of course, can be mentioned on that Zera tool. Then we have Itzkuk, who's finding his rhythm more and more on the main tank role. So this is by no means going to be an easy game for the one, even with that Nazebo. And even with that Nazebo considered to be, you know, such a strong late game counter to the Sergeant Hammer. But whenever you pick Nazebo, Tetcher, you know the rule. Gotta get to the late game first. Yes, he Body blocks already so dying. good. Yep, that the A team first blood. <laughs> that was well, I don't know why Raider was there, quite frankly, but he's dead, to rotate so top, right? I guess, but that was very early. He didn't want to clear the minions first mm -hmm. or wait for his team or, you know, not do those things where he died. Yeah, I think that uh, is, is perfectly right. I mean, when you play against certain heroes, like Zeratul being one of them, you have to be in your tippy toes as a ranged uh, assassin who's very squishy and has no escapes, right? Because he could be lurking in the shadows. Another hero could be Valera, for that matter. Um, and if they interrupt you on your way top in that soul lane, then you're not going to have a good time escaping. Olele duels with Kieshi and ZJZ, but he only trades out a tiny bit of health past his shield, so he does trade efficiently here. Bruiser. Probably knows what's going on now that he sees no heroes up here, but no one's in position to take it as bot lane is getting wrecked. That it is, Sergeant Hammer left alone. However, the one they have a pretty good victory here, stealing away sneakily that first healing pulse, which is going to be pretty important for them. Now, they took a little bit of damage in the bottom in uh, return, so only Thrall, now Nazebo in the mix as well there. There's not much they can do. Nazebo can sometimes punish a stationary hammer with a good zombie wall, but for now, against two heroes, there's nothing he can do. Thrall basically takes turns and now takes a mercenary camp with that uh, turret, soon to be unlocked. And as such, we're going to see a fortification camp. Takes protein. a lot of damage, actually, from that turret. Yeah, he, he can still do it, it's fine, but he's not going to say no to assistance. Yep, I mean, there is always the possibility of an invade by someone, someone like Zeratul, which uh, made me wonder why Luval actually... Ooh, uh, sorry, spiders. why Hugo dropped so low there and didn't retreat. Okay, moves back into position. Siege is up, and that tower is under attack. White main already dropping the heal. There is the zombie wall, and Doesn't this, even care. this wall trade negatively on damage. Actually does burn the uh, <laughs> the extra armor here for the protection. Zebra just spamming spiders. He's gonna, he's gonna finish Widowmakers really fast. Yeah. So it's not all just bad and gloomy here for the one because they were able to get, as, as you said, like Spooter value. Uh, however, those towers ain't looking so healthy anymore. And that is, of course, because of Sergeant Hammer. LK just tanking all the way through with Stu goes right behind him. The clemency is so good. And yeah, by the way, yet again, we see the big voodoo coming in from Meng on Nazebo. So going for that late game tankiness. And in this case, like we called Big Voodoo a situational talent before Tetra, didn't we? But I think against heroes like Zeratul, you need to go for it. You need to have that additional beefiness. I agree, but speaking of beefiness, what's the biggest issue with Siege Tactics Hammer? The fact is that you don't sustain very well against those spiders with Omega's complete, yeah. by the way. So instead, we get regenerative bio steel, giving Sergeant wow. Hammer that extra health regen, so that way he can just stay sieged up anyway. Because look at let's look at the CC. Roots, Sundering, Sword of Decked Cane Roots again. All of these are low damage as well. Phoenix gets absolutely destroyed. Zombie Ball does some good damage. Where's that healing from White Mane? LLK has to back up. Yeah, early kill onto Phoenix. The CC was real and the interrupt, you know, on the teleport as well was even better. But I love the catch you made there, Tetra. Like catching out this uh, adaptive choice, the situational choice against Nazebo damage. Oh my god. Okay. So speaking of adaptive choices, graduating range as well. 
I mean, the Zeebo can't run up to you if you're even <laughs> further away. It's the strategy here. He's clearing out the minion wave while he's at it. Now going to start pinging in as the range is available. Here we go. Wolfo is still taking that poke range. damage. The, gray, the range is huge right now on LK. He can stay there in all safety. And, you know, you talk a lot about, we talk a lot about Spooters and the spider damage, but Nazebo is very likely going to go Ravenous Spirit as well, simply because Pro Scene in China has found that talent to be a little stronger, although I don't always agree with it. But yeah, you can keep your distance a little bit safer as well from that Ravenous Spirit, of course. Now, such Hammer sieges up very far back so that he's going to be able to burn onto this Protector from even further away. Nice positioning. There we go. The extra range tick means the Hammer is going to be able to drop some quick early damage onto it. Yeah, this is an adaptive build coming in from the A-Team. Once again, just showing how creative they are mm -hmm. with their Heroes of the Storm at the moment. Very true, but... What, are, what else is really good for the one here is the fact that they are the Nazebo game in, uh, team and they are the ones also getting the first objective. That feels yeah. really good, man. So you can really make sure to have enough time to get to that late game stage. And sometimes Nazebo teams can actually snowball like crazy because just like heroes like, let's say, Sergeant Hammer or Asmodan, he's actually really good at seizing. Sergeant Hammer is not so good at surviving anymore. You can get caught by that protector. It happens so often. And yep, it's still super lethal in terms of damage. Yeah, I mean, that was that was quite silly. Yep. That was a little daft, putting himself in that position. And as such, he got taken out. The Y main healing is not burst healing without doing damage. And in that case, there was no damage to give. Bruiser dances away before he takes Meng damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he wasn't even caught in a zombie wall or anything. That was just straight up greedy play by Sergeant Hammer. Too lazy to unseach, too confident in his or in her own self-sustain and the one of White main. Couldn't really done much. I'm not sure if Clan's Intercession was ready there to actually help Sergeant Hammer uh, out of that hand, out of that Steam Fist. Not sure either. As we see level 10 available, Nazebo holding his, as is Deckard for the moment. Let's see what they decide to go for. It's very close for the A-team, so yep. it's not so bad, but they are going to lose this fort in that level 10 advantage time period. And this is the dream case scenario for every Nazebo player. You double soak middle and bottom while your four main rotation is getting the job done. Destroying the first uh, structure of the game here, the first top fort being destroyed. Now Nazebo, Meng is still holding on to his level 10, not choosing it yeah. quite yet. Wants to keep it as a surprise maybe during that next team fight. We see the Earthquake coming in, by the way, and the Hyperion. Great synergy with that ace in the hole, uh, level one talent for Rainer. All those slows are going to come in very, very handy. They are. Turret going to be stolen away here by the A-Team. They just make the aggressive move forward, and they're going to be able to steal that fortification camp, and Ravenous Spirit is locked mm -hmm. in. Ravenous Spirit, we see it again. No Gargantuan for the zoning on a boss, uh, sorry, on an objective platform, for example. Thrall is on the chase here, forces out, forces out the Void Burn Prison, the trading heroic abilities those two melee assassins. They trade heroics that are the same cooldown, same and cooldown. Thrall burns the turret, so Zeratul comes out way ahead there. That is true. Forcing out the turret and escaping, of course, is a pretty good trade for any Zeratul player. Um, so in terms of items, what do we currently have? I think I saw Healing Pulse still in possession of the one. Yep, two actually. My mistake. Two turrets. Three turrets currently in favor of the A-Team. So it's damage versus healing. They're going to move forward. A little bit of damage onto Hugo, but not enough. Taunt. Taunt is being used, but no one's really in position. One turret already being dropped here. They are over committing to this i think i thought it was i think it was over way before that tower even was thought about being put down yeah here comes tornado. the tornado pushes sergeant hammer into this keep in mind no siege tactics what, what? available that was a weird cleanse that cleanse yep that was one <laughs> here comes the hyperion they take advantage of the moment good wrecking ball by yeats cook here comes the salvo for the turnaround and forcing the one to back up but that was strange yeah that cleanse was probably a panic reaction there to really make sure sergeant hammer doesn't fall victim uh, to any follow-up CC there, maybe they were expecting the Blessed Shield or anything. Uh, but also, that Salvo didn't really do much, right? They don't really have that many slowing sources. If you look at it, Garage is pretty much the only one they could potentially have. Zeratul doesn't have that many slows. Sure, a single target slow counts as well. White Main yeah. doesn't really have a whole lot, so yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it's Inquisition, the Mines of Hammer, which do count. Yeah. Zeratul Q, Singularity Spike. Zeratul kill. Ice block, ice block. Not acquired. <laughs> not needed. Not needed. Patience by Meng being shown that or not having Ice Block available. Yep, and 
really good position for him to potentially use that ice block as well because uh with zeratul and uh, phoenix overextending they would have definitely taken that fort damage so uh Maybe he would have even been able to get a cheeky return kill. But as it is, speaking of cheeky maneuvers, we see the one going for yet another healing camp. A-Team is not letting that go through without a fight. BFG coming in. Bruise a wraparound from the side. Drops the VP, but he's taking a lot of damage over here. Has to wrap around. And in the meantime, Garrosh through. dies in the back line. LLK oh. retreating. And oh. Ancestral Wrath will finish off Bruiser. Beautiful reveal there. Hoo -hoo. The communication by the one was really on point there. Communicating and, uh, you know, letting Johanna know as to where Zeratul tried to escape to. And then with that long range reveal with the shield glare, uh, they made sure that with that vision, Thrall could use the Ancestral Wrath, as you said, Tetra. And finish the Protoss. Okay, drops a little bit of damage onto the members of the one, but not enough to actually stop them stealing that camp. Just do a bit of damage to them while they do so. Roll enjoys his uh, enjoys his fun interactive gameplay as he stands on the point. Yeah, he's uh, he having a little bit of a... a <laughs> taking a little bit of a break there, enjoying the view on Volskaya Foundry. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's uh, astonished by all those weird machines. <laughs> Yeah, but now he gets a robot, so it's a good trade-off. Stand still for a couple seconds, get a robot. That's a pretty cool trade as we see them moving in with this protector. Only one person in for the moment who is going to be the second passenger. Looks like it will be Deckard. All right, here comes the protector trying to demolish the middle base, the middle fort, and that's exactly what he's going to do. Tetra, would you stand still for 24 hours without doing anything, but as a reward, you would get a nice mech to control for, let's say, an hour. I don't before it expires. I, I don't know what I would use it for. I mean, I, d I, d I don't have much use for a mech in my real life. I'm not <laughs> usually in battle. So probably not um, in this case, as we do see them moving forward with that giant protector. Yep, still going strong, still sitting at 87% here. Johanna tried to go for a little bit of flank. The Iron Skin is probably going to keep her alive, just like the Laws of Hope. Reinforcements uh -oh. have arrived. The protector and Hugo are here. And that's going to put too much pressure onto Bruiser and Olele. Both go different directions. Olele will be the one to fall most certainly here. A protector trying to use the dive, unable to do so. All right, that was a pretty easy pick up there against that Phoenix. Now, all forts have been demolished. That means it could be keep time soon here. 16 to 14. Looks like the one is not done just yet. They're here to steal away the turret and... At some point when your team is almost fully geared up, you actually need to be careful to uh, not clear that, and then all of a sudden you don't have anyone to pick it up, and you would give it over to the A-team one way or the other. So they still had space left. Good for them. They hover around, thinking about fighting Hoho, but even Hoho so extended is not worth the chance, the opportunity to engage. That is pretty crazy. Lornado, and here's oh. why you should pick Siege Tactics, ladies and oh. gentlemen, as LK gets pushed right out the base and killed off easiest Lornado in ZJ sets life. And we've mentioned this adaptive uh, talent build, you know, to fight the Nazebo, but you also have to keep yourself alive against the Lornado. ZJ set with a perfect oh. angle, taking Sergeant Hammer out, and now the gates are wide open. Garrosh falls next. All of a sudden, that keep is probably going to fall. The Yamato cannon is already blasting onto that keep, and that might even be game if they get more staggered deaths, Tetra. They're looking for it. Olele and Bruiser once again hovering around the Protoss Brethren having a little bit of trouble dealing with the current swarming members of the one looking to move forward. Bruiser eats some spiders while stealthed and has to back up. All right, structures are falling left, right and center here for the A-team. Unfortunately for them, they still don't have the frontliner to really keep that onslaught of the of the one here at Hall. They still have a turret. They can use that to intercept the aggro of that keep. Pretty sure Nazebo is going to use it at any Hello. time now. Nope. Wait for the minions. LK almost oh escaped, but got caught in that uh, scroll of identify. And as such, uh, Lele is going to be able to get out of there this time. Sorry, not scroll of identify, scroll of ceiling. But yeah. Lele, he's just being a distraction right now, and he's probably going to be a dead distraction. I keep dead calling it scroll of identify as well, so <laughs> I I feel you. It's just the most logical thing to say uh, when talking about Decker Kane. Oh, Lele takes the one on a cruise, on a trip around the world, but here comes Hugo, empowered by their conveyor belt. Needs to be careful though, Hugo, that is. Potion to save his life. Sorry, I had a little lag, so carry on. No worry. The Phoenix ends up dying anyways, because Meng cuts off his flight path. I'm not sure if Keshi did have his penetrating round ready or not, because sometimes that can be used, actually, to interrupt 
the teleporting animation of Phoenix if you're on your tippy toes and you uh, use it in time. Bile infection picked and done. So the one Feels really good. good stacking process for them so far. All they right. Finished it. Has 185 stacks. That's more than enough. So from now on, whenever Nazebo gets that soul harvest on a minion wave, for example, that could be lights out for Sergeant Hammer. So much additional damage. I think they just wanted to buy time here. Now with VP gone, Tetcher, this is an open core. They're moving in. Looks like they yeah. agree with you and want to try and just make the play. It's a 5v5 with a four level lead right now for the one. Just go. They move forward. Hyperion being burned. Zombies battering on the core already. Look at the okay, on the core. Position. Yeah, Hammer's trying to prevent it by just sieging in the damage. Or Lele's just getting wrecked off to the side as the members are separated. Gargant the Ravenous Spirit just destroys Hammer. Just straight up kills him. And yep. that's going to be GG. The one take game number one. Nazebo and his boys prapping their way to victory here. Melting down the core with the power of Toads and Spooters. And that's all she wrote. That's how you can dominate as a 